can they? Yeah, just go over the line. We're teaching them. Yeah, well, there you go. Okay. Good morning. My name is Chris Caius. I'm chairman of the administration committee for Kane County, and I'm calling this meeting for Wednesday, April 13th, 2022, to order at 1016 a.m. Can we have a roll call, please? Martin. Martin present. Herman. Here. Davis. Davis here. Ford. Roz. Roz here. Gums. Pirog. Here. Chepro. Caius. You have a quorum. Caius present. We have a quorum. Okay. Then may I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of March 9th, 2022. Moved by. Berman moved. Berman. Second, second by Fraz. Any changes, modifications, <clears throat> notifications? Nothing. Roll call, please. Berman. Berman, yes. Davist. Yes. Ford. Roz? Yes. Gums? Martin? Martin, yes. Caius. Caius, yes. Approved. And it's approved. Uh, I believe the uh, monthly reports, finance reports, are in the agenda. Is there any public comment online or in person? <clears throat> Don't hear any. Then uh, with the indulgence of the committee, I'd like to uh, rearrange the agenda slightly. Uh, we have uh, Sheriff Hain here to present an item on the Addiction Treatment Center, I believe. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairman Caius. Uh, so I think everybody's familiar. They've heard me talk about the last three years, about uh, 20 to 30,000 square feet of open space we have at the Sheriff's Office. Uh, we had the concept to bring in a residential treatment center that we would lease to uh, an entity to run out of the sheriff's office. We posted uh, an RFP on that earlier this year, finally going through all the legal mechanics to be able to do it. Uh, we had about 18 people take a look at the RFP and we had zero submissions on that. Uh, the feedback we got was the term of the lease was way too long. There's some stigma with it being on top of a jail, even though we're looking at Medicaid beds that would serve, and this is badly needed in Kane County, I, I need to reiterate that, Medicaid beds that would serve the people coming out of jail, those being referred from the courthouse, and uh, just other people in need in the community, especially uh, our low-income residents. So um, as we struggled to try and get this off the ground, I was approached by a real estate group out of Aurora at uh, Church and Corporate Boulevard, if you can picture that, right off of I-88 and uh, Farnsworth Avenue. It's in an industrial park. They had a 48,000 square foot uh, home for autistic children. Unfortunately, uh, they were only in there for five years and they went out of business. So now it is completely vacant. It is perfectly modeled to uh, house a residential treatment center uh, right here in Kane County. So what I'm proposing is that the county take out a lease on this building and then we sublease that to two to three treatment centers that are willing to operate within that space. Also, this would provide uh, potential housing for the health department for some of their operations, which I know is a need. Uh, it would offer us a mass vaccine, I should say a smaller vaccination site, not a mass vaccination site as we look to the future uh, to operate out of some of the area in there. Again, 48,000 square feet already completely built out, just needs some uh, touch-ups and makeups on it. But we're looking at a zero sum here to the county, actually potential revenue revenue making while providing uh, a desperately uh, needed service to our community in the vein of Medicaid beds. So I'm, I'm coming here to just put that on your radar. I would like as our next steps to be, my next steps to be, uh, to go ahead with a similar RFP like we had for the sheriff's office, just to get feedback from other treatment centers. We've had about three or four on the line that are interested in uh, subleasing already, uh, but we really wanna put it out there to see what kind of feedback we get and then move forward with further, further discussions of that lease from there. Uh, questions, Mr. Martin? I, one, very mundane, where again was- I'm sorry, Mr. Martin, can you use your microphone? Where, where again, I, I got too close the first time and it scared the heck out. <laughs> Where again is this building? Sure, it's at 998 Corporate Boulevard in Aurora. That's, so, on, the, that's on the far east side, right? Yep, east side. Uh, think of it just west of the outlet mall at 88 and Farnsworth. Blair, could you cue that video for me? 
we actually have a, a really quick, it's a one minute walkthrough of it. <clears throat> I meant to have this playing in the uh, background as I was talking, but this will do the trick. Okay. Is that part of the property too? Yes, it is. And that was part of our limitations at the sheriff's office. We didn't have a whole lot of rec area outside. Um, obviously there's a playground there because it was for autistic children, but uh, we can do whatever we like with that space. Well, since I still have the floor, I mean, I'm supportive of the effort going ahead to see if we can do this. Uh, with, and again, I'm, I'm at, I always say I'm at my best when I'm totally ignorant. It's hard for me to believe that nobody Nobody had an interest in the facility at the at the uh, correction building. Yeah, it does break my heart too. But with all the space, well, I mean, it's just it's it's got it's got all of the amenities it does, that the it world does. says that they need, and it's beyond me to believe that they nobody wanted to do it. It literally sits right on top. So of what are you what are you going to do with the uh, well with all of our empty space, space that we have here in the county? I, I mean that leaves us open for further discussion on where we can move folks around because we're never going to build out. Look, let, let, let's look to the future. We built a 640 bed jail that was supposed to be additional beds should uh, the jail population increase over time. Our jail population is at 300 right now and it keeps going down. Uh, who knows what will happen with the, uh, the end of cash bail and the new safety act, but we, we predict we'll never get to that 640 point. We'll never have to build upon that jail. So yeah, uh, there, there's plenty of options that we can use that space for, from storage okay. to housing other offices within the county. All right, thank you. And then, Madam Chair. There we go, now it's on. Thank you. Um, I'd like to just to address what the perception is of using the jail as a potential site and the reason why the RFPs were not successful. Um, when you may be <clears throat> arrested for a potential criminal act or what- Madam Chair, can I ask, is that microphone okay? I'm having a tough time here now. There, is that better? Yeah, get close on that one, I guess. Okay. Up close and personal with my microphone. Um, so, so the jail, the perception of having a drug treatment facility at the jail um, is not for the well-being of the client who would be there. Uh, it's the jail is considered a punitive uh, f facility. I mean, you're there to be rehabilitated, yes, but you have to serve an appropriate amount of time. There's no place to go outside to visit with family. Um, to reflect on perhaps <clears throat> the causes of your addiction um, because you're locked up. You're in, a, you're in a facility that is for punishment rather than rehabilitation. So this allows the opportunity for potential clients to go outside. And that's why I said, is that land? connected uh, to this facility because it's a place to walk to meditate. Uh, and it certainly can be controlled if appropriate, but these individuals are rehabilitated after their time in, uh, in serving their time perhaps in jail. This is their next step to get their lives together. So that's why the jail, in, in my understanding, why it wasn't a, a good facility space-wise, yes, absolutely, uh, but um, you don't want to go visit your family member at, at a jail. It's the optics, man. Optics. I think uh, uh, Lewis had her hand up. Thank you. Anita? Yeah, um, I was going to agree with you on the stigma, um, having it at the jail. When we first discussed actually having the big building there, that was one of the things, too. How could we make it not look like you were going to the jail? So it, good idea, but bad. But I just want to comment on this um, property in Aurora. Um, I'm very familiar with where it is, and I've actually seen the property. It would be an amazing um, thing for Kane County and a real feather in our cap to just have this kind of facility. And we all know the need is there. And to bring the proposal to us at no cost, I mean, <laughs> so good, so good. And it's really, it's easily accessible from the tollway, from um, Farnsworth. I mean, perfect location, too, for anybody to get to. So. I'm super excited about this. And thank you very much for all the things. I do want to reiterate that there is risk involved. So we would be leasing it and then subleasing it. So, yeah. you know, the, the onus is going to be really on the county. And I'm willing to take on that onus to make sure that it's filled with uh, business and occupants. 
uh, Mr. Fraz. So a uh, question and then a couple of comments. Um, so what, regarding what you just said, um, King County would not be operating this. No, right? we would be subleasing to be completely experienced treatment centers. So um, yeah, I guess the other advantage is I know we had some substantial build out costs at the jail as well as an elevator wing, I think we were talking about. So it was, yeah. it was not an inexpensive proposition. So um, yeah, I guess you mentioned risk. That would be as a member of this committee, my biggest concern. Um, and uh, you know, my recommendation would be to uh, you know, uh, get a letter, give them a letter of intent uh, with like a 120 day due diligence. And then, you know, during that period, see if you could get at least commitments or letters of intent from those leasers. Do you agree that an RFP is the right way to go to truly solicit those folks? Um, yeah. Just I, to get I would, their history and... Yeah, definitely. But I, I think it's important to, you know, maybe buy us some, you know, again, a, a due diligence period sure. where we could maybe pull that off. And if they're really interested in doing this deal, 120 days would not be un, unheard of. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fraz. Any other comments or questions? Oh, uh, Mr. Davist. A couple of the comments reminded me of, of something that I've asked about for many years. And Doug and Chief Judge will remember this. Um, this may not be a fit. I thought I heard you say that the, the lessors or sublease would not, wouldn't necessarily be the entire facility, which might leave some for our, what I'm getting at is I'm still looking for a neutral exchange site because of that feeling, just the, you know, the vibe of having to go to the jail or to the sheriff's office. And when kids have to be handed over in domestic situations, sure. it, would, it would be nice to not have to do that in the setting of the sheriff's office or police station. And I saw the playground and yeah. I thought, oh, maybe this is our opportunity, chief judge, to yeah. no, it's very find smart. a neutral exchange site so that kids could have a, a nicer atmosphere. Very smart, Mr. Davis, who would be occupied 24 seven with staff, not necessarily police staff, but also there would be video monitoring the, the cameras are already, already actually operational in that facility. So it's ready to go. Excellent right. idea. Very Back good. to Mr. Martin. Um, the, the whoever we're using as our consultant can help advise us on this point, but it, it, it wouldn't be unusual in a normal commercial context if you were going to buy a building that the lender would say, well, let's have a tenant first. And maybe we can, maybe the whole contingency period can have two facets to it. One, just looking at the general condition of the building, but secondly, um, giving us time to enter into leases as a condition of being obligated. I mean, I'd hate to, I'd hate to have, you know, a, a nice industrial building that uh, obviously it, it, it has some attractive aspects to the use that we want to apply to it, but it was built as an industrial building. So that market in that building or that area must be a little softer than we would think. So if we could have in that contingency uh, that, that we want to have the leases in place or a certain percentage of it, so then we have some predictability. Right. Uh, we can be talking about security deposits and financial background backing of the proposed tenants and all of that type of stuff in the same context and they are willing to waive the the owner is willing to waive our rent for 120 days to 365 days for you know continued build out construction clean up of the well and then operations and, and then pardon me being old and cynical but then the question is why because they're very anxious to have it filled they have a well i understand mortgage. i understand but if if you have a money-making <clears throat> enterprise offering people a lot of free rent might indicate that you've got a problem. I'm just, I just want to have our antennas up. Certainly. So I guess obviously that business antennae, operated. I want our antennae up as we, uh, yeah, that business operated in there for, like I said, five years, it was built specifically for them. Now with 48,000 square feet, it's just too large for oh. one single nonprofit. As long as, we're, as long as we're going through the thought process. I'm yep. not, the water back to Mr. Fraz. Um, yeah, the industrial is hot right now, but office is not. So this probably leans a little bit more towards office with the building. I understand. I just, um, what's the uh, asking price? Uh, for sale? They don't have it listed oh, for you're sale. Just, you're talking about just lease. Yeah. So they had offered a suggestion of a 10-year uh, lease with a five-year option to buy. Okay. okay. And I do have a template of that lease if... You guys would like me to email it to you just so you can take a look and at do it. you um just for discussion purposes what 
do you recall what the build out was going to be the rough estimate of construction and the, the jail option? Oh, the jail option. It was anywhere, depending on what model we went with 900,000 to 7 million. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> narrowed it down. So that would go away. <laughs> Leaning towards so seven that's what we like to hear in committees all narrowed down to. I'm not like Joe Onzik. I can't give you a specific <laughs> <That's> <laughs> number good. off the cuff. And then back to you, Ms. Madam well, Chairman. If we're going to be moving forward with this, with the inclusion of the health department, I would like to invite the health department to take a look at it um, so that they can see if that facility does meet their needs and they can carve out a potential space. Um, since it's going to be our lease, our, our health department should have the first opportunity to, to take a look what they feel is appropriate. And the other question I have, uh, because of the population needs, uh, will it be served by public transportation, PACE bus? So it's right in the middle of an industrial park. So yes, there is a PACE bus route to that area. The also, the great thing about it, a lot of treatment centers have struggled with the NIMBY issue, not in my backyard. Um, being in the middle of an industrial park, we're not going to face that. We do have to get, uh, or I should say, the treatment centers will have to get a special use permit uh, from the city of Aurora to be able to operate in there. But uh, we've already spoken with Mayor Urban, and uh, I would call him supportive of the idea, especially because it is in that area of his city and he understands the uh, needs that it serves. Very good, very good, thank you. Great, okay, if there's no other questions then I'm uh, I'm just asking for a consensus. There's no objection that I hear, then we have a consensus to, the, to proceed, to investigate. I will keep you all posted. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, The next item, I believe, we'll, we will move down. Is it to number 10? But my uh, number 10 the resolution for the Judicial Center, or is that the one? Uh, Judge Hull present. Welcome, Judge. The floor is hey. yours. Good morning. How are you? Um, so we are before the board, uh, before committee today, asking you to approve the resolution that was sent out in your packet. Um, just to give you a brief a uh, brief summary of why we're before you. Uh, as you know, or many of you have heard, there's been legislation passed that's gonna go into effect on January 1st of 2023 called the Safety Act. It's the elimination of cash bail in Illinois. As a result of the legislation, uh, there are a number of things that the court system is gonna be required to do for those hearings, uh, which includes holding court 365 days a year, um, we do that now with bond call, but uh, legislation calls for pretrial detention hearings, which are going to be uh, anticipated to be much more lengthy. And ultimately, the end result is, uh, as we go through and we look at our space needs, uh, right now in 005, where our current uh, bond call is heard, that courtroom shares both uh, bond call in the morning, but also here's emergency orders of protection and also plenary order of protections in the afternoon. As a result of the new legislation, that courtroom is going to have to be uh, hearing pretrial detention hearings uh, all day, uh, every day. And so now we need to find a room to send our orders of protection to. And again, orders of protection are so important. Obviously, it goes without saying. Um, we worked with Roger. Uh, I've been in contact with uh, Mr. Caius um, to look at any available space. The only available space at the Judicial Center now is the multi-purpose room, which is 001 on the uh, lower level. We work with uh, White & Company, thanks to Mr. Feinstock, and uh, we have uh, a design plan that's done. Uh, the resolution asked for uh, 700 and approval of $777,000. Doug, I don't think that includes the, the technology though, correct? So that does not include the technology, um, but um, this is a situation where, again, number one is we looked to available space. I know I've talked to Madam Chair and many of you about that. Do we have any space that we can use right now? The answer is no, we don't. Um, then the next question is, do we have any space that we can uh, turn or that we can use and turn over? This is an existing room, so we don't have to, we just have to build it out. Um, and that's, you know, ultimately a, a, a savings for the county, um, but I'm here to answer any questions you might have. But again, I think it's important to understand that, again, this is legislation that's passed. We had no control over this. Uh, we don't have any control over it. What we do have control over it, and what we do need to do is be prepared for January 1st of 2023. And this is a step in that process. So I'd be happy to answer any questions anybody has. Okay. Any questions from the committee? 
Yep, ready, Mr. Fraz? I'm just thinking big picture, but I know we have some people working over in the multi-purpose building and facilities management. Um, I'm not sure if that's state's attorney or did, does anybody recall? Mm -hmm. Pre-trial. State's attorney. Yeah. That's state's attorney. Trial diversion. So this, <clears throat> this wouldn't uh, pr provide enough space where we could get them back in the building. Uh, well, Mr. Feinstock, do you want to talk about that? Because I know you. So the, the, uh, I believe the multi-purpose room is unrelated to the state's attorney pre-trial diversion group. They're looking at potential office space in the branch court and a couple of other locations. Last, I had heard uh, state's attorney Mosser and circuit clerk Barrero were going to meet to discuss the use of a, a portion of, of space in the North Campus or the King County Branch Court. I don't, I don't know that that meeting's happened yet. I'd just like to get them out of building management as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, unfortunately, when, when we had White and Company there and they did the design, uh, it's just a regular size courtroom that we're gonna need because we have petitioners, respondents, witnesses. Uh, uh, the hope that Ms. Mosser has is that we can also use it for grand jury. I believe she's been in front of you or at least talked about possibly um, changing what's the grand jury room, which is in her office and changing that to office space um, because of her needs. And her hope was that we could use this room for grand jury. I told her we're certainly willing to explore that. The issue is when the grand jury meets, where do you hold emergency orders of protection and plenary orders of protection? So, but we're working with Ms. Mosser and, and again, building and grounds on, on that. So that you know the the ask is seven fifty, I think you said. Yeah, it's seven seven seventy seven right now. Um, so. But again, that does not include uh, with everything now. The technology is a significant component. Doug, again, did you have a chance to talk to our uh, uh, an estimate as to the uh, technology? An estimate would be anywhere from sixty to seventy five thousand. Okay, so about eight fifty all in. Um, so. Uh, you know whether we. I'm you know, sorry, we need to hear that. Can you? It, it, Doug said between. 60 to 75,000. Okay, um, but again, with, with that, I mean, when you say ballpark, that's ballpark because yeah. it depends on supply. And so assuming we all agree a hundred percent or whatever to, you know, here we, then the next question is where do we get the money? So I, I haven't heard anything on that end, but. Uh, okay. So yes. Situation. So couple, couple, because Mr. Martin, when I tried to reach out, his question was, okay, who's paying for it? Um, and so there's a couple different thoughts. One is we do have a fund which is getting replenished on a monthly basis. Uh, Doug, the latest figures, it's somewhere averages around somewhere between 50 to $55,000 a month. Um, right now that's depleted because we're using that for the build out at the JJC, but obviously that will replenish in time. Um, we also hope that again, um, that perhaps uh, you would consider using some of your capital or reserves, but that's that that's up to, obviously up to you, and we're willing to work with you on that. We uh, I'm I'm chairman of the Public Building Commission, and uh, we do have some funds there that might be available. Although I would rather keep them for a new government center, but uh, that might be might get us through the through the project. <laughs> no, and, and and Mr. Franz, I mean, and I understand 100. percent And and what we have is that thankfully we have an ordinance which is we're going to replenish our that fund. Um, but right now, as I said, we're, we're writing the checks for the JJC, and so it'll take a while. So we'd love to be in a partnership on that. So I, I guess my position is I support the, uh, the concept and uh, uh, acknowledging that we have to find the money. And Mr. Martin? Um, uh, relative to all the legislation that's passed, which is why we're doing this, um, I was going to use the term open the spigot, but we're not getting anything here um from the from the state in support of the legislation how much more of this how much more capital has anybody analyzed if and how much more capital expenditure is going to be necessitated by this uh legislation is there any chance i can ask you to vote on this before i answer that question <laughs> no good well, well, no. So the answer is yes. We've been working collectively. And, and again, the leadership of the county board, you've asked us when we first brought this up, what is this going to cost the county? And so we've continued to come back from a, from a space need. This should be the only space need from a uh, added, added uh, employees from the public defender's office, state's attorney's office, circuit clerk, because we're going to add a new courtroom. Uh, we're working on those right now to bring to you. Um, just to give you an example, and, and DuPage is not Kane County. But, but uh, and again, this is just all through reading and hearing, but 
Uh, the, the word on the street is that DuPage County is asking for an, uh, somewhere between 12 to 15 new assistant state's attorneys. Now, we're not at that level. And in fact, as we look and try to work together, the state's attorney, PD, judges, we're trying to come to you with what we would see as a reasonable request as to what the added employee cost will be. So space-wise, I think this is going to be it. But employee-wise, uh, we're working on that for the next well, And the reason I asked it, and again, with no financial uh, sophistication or knowledge applied to the question, is if, if we had capital needs necessitated by that, maybe we could, maybe we could bond some of that. If, you know, obviously, we can't, we can't borrow salaries. So I didn't, I, 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 that's a separate, to me, that's a separate issue. But if we had capital expenses, I didn't know if there was a, that was a way of leveling off our responsibility. And, and uh, but if that's the only one we've got, then it's not a terribly important question. Madam Chair. Um, we also go back to the pre-divergent program. I spoke with Martha Paschke um, several days ago, just <clears throat> Uh, light conversation. That program is increasing. I think that they're looking at hiring, uh, she said, definitely more people to about 12. So I don't know how many right now are at the uh, multi-purpose building uh, and facilities, uh, but there's going to be, let's say, seven more. So there, and that'll happen relatively quickly. It's just frustrating because we, we had a facilities management employee that needed an office, and I was told there's no room. Um, yes, I know. I so, know. I mean, I we know. just opened the place up, and there's people from other departments using building management's office space, so they don't have enough room for their own people. I, I, so I, I kind of frustrating. The, put them in the empty jail. And just, I mean, to Mr. <laughs> uh, Martin's comment on bonding, if you'll indulge me, um, that it is a possibility. We were just talking about it before the meeting. You know, our our capacity for bonding is tremendous. We hardly have a bond history even um, to the point where it maybe even affects negatively our, our credit rating because we, you know, just like somebody who's never had a loan. Um, so the, the smart thing to do would be to package this in with a, in addition to the judicial center and or uh, moving the government center out there with one bond, in my opinion. Okay. But my thought is that when I go shopping for a new bathroom with my wife, which I have done recently, is she's looking at the 777 one, and I'm looking at the 125 one. Is there, is there, this 777 is a magic number, or is there, um, do we have an economy model that we can check out? I'll, I'll defer to uh, uh, Mr. Fonstock on that. We appreciate the guidance that he's given us uh, when working with White & Company, but uh, Roger? Sure. So the, the price, as I understand it, is, is an all-inclusive design, and they would ultimately take it out to do the construction management. Um, the 777000 includes the, the architect design work to get the final uh, uh, plan set to go out for bids on the construction. So, you know, we have a tight timeline between now and the, the scheduled use of the yeah, yeah. location. So given the the, the circumstances we're trying to get uh white and company to do the plan set to go out for the the bids i think that's the you know the the biggest time constraint or critical path uh for us right now um you know the price inclusive of the tech and other things that need to go into the room i think that someone mentioned eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. i think that's a, a discussion for finance to figure out you know where we might have funds to, you know, deal with that. I, I, you know, bonding for capital uh, for buildings is certainly an option. I don't know if it's the timely option in this scenario. I think that would be something that would take um, maybe too long for this timeline, but it certainly for other, other purposes would, you know, definitely suit the county as far as the, the other facilities that have needs. So right now our timeline, I believe uh, Chief Judge was January 1st. Well, as of, as of the law goes into effect on January 1st. So at that point in time, that's the first day that we begin to hold those hearings. And then we have no place for our plenary and emergencies. You need it by December 1st. 
and that would be really tight. Moving, yeah. <laughs> but we, we, think, we have we have worked with White and Company, and, and I yeah. can't say enough about how great they've been to work with. But he's building the same type of project to DuPage County, where the, if you go county to county, we're all in that same situation with the time requirement. And so we have worked, and the reason that we're here before JPS is because. Um, based on the timeline that Roger and, and White and Company gave us, we needed to try to move on this as quickly as we could. Okay. Any any other comments, Mr. Fonstock? So again, this is uh, Roger Fonstock. The, I think the interest would be to get the 777,000 and also try to bridge the technology planning portion of it in finance as well. So I, I do think that would be important because we would get to sometime in, in uh, you know, probably October, November, dealing with the tech planning. And right now, um, Charles Lasky's here, he can tell you the lead time for ordering any of that is incredible. We could probably order it today and we'd be lucky to get some of it by the time they open. So that, that's just been our lead time. It's six months to a year to order a lot of the different types of technology. So we're looking at passing this resolution today with the anticipation of uh, funding, of working the funding in the future. Uh, the detail. I think eight hundred and fifty thousand at finance would be the discussion. Yeah. So, um, Mr. Proz. Mr. Proz speaking. I, I'm just wondering, Roger. You know, um, if we could find the funding for the IT portion of it somewhere else, and would it be would it be possible to order the equipment now? I mean, we certainly could. We haven't seen the plans yeah. for the space. We have a sketch of the space from one of the architect uh, quick renderings. It's not even uh, to scale, but um, we could certainly start working on that. If you know, it's it's kind of the question is cart before the horse. Do you order the equipment or or do you wait until they kind of sign off on the construction? Once you sign off on the construction, I think we would probably order the equipment and try to you know work through the financial part of it during the month as it goes through committee. My question is just, it's, it's appropriate to do that, to ask for the, uh, to pass the resolution without knowing exactly, but work on the, the funding later. There, I think you're getting. moving it to finance. Okay. Yes, you're so, approving the, the, the concept, concept would, and concept. construction and the, I believe it names white as the architect. Correct. So at that point, uh, it would go to finance to consider how do you, budget and well okay so i'll move it then I, that's what i was looking for is a motion Ms. Uh, second. mr martin and Froz. any other discussion mr, uh, mr. I, davis I'm supportive of this entire concept and mm -hmm. in your bathroom shopping question I, I i am still a little curious there i mean i just heard roger say that there's not even a scale to scale drawing of this yet so i'm yeah. Even though it's inclusive of the design work and and you know the, the sure. full package, which certainly adds to it, I don't remember the interior of 001 right now. But I have to tell you that I do get just a little bit of a gut feeling, like why is it that expensive to refit this existing space? Well, there's why is it that much? But yeah. again, well, I support the idea. I know it's you know we didn't really get a choice in this. They, they're forcing our hand, so I'm with you but maybe the pencil can still be sharpened on that number. Oh, and we're always willing to do that. But I mean, if you were to, anybody's always, you know, you're always welcome, obviously, to come over. In that, that courtroom has been used as a temporary courtroom and Doug could speak to it better than I could, but there was a, uh, a temporary bench that was built where a judge sits now. The issue is, is that it's temporary, it's moved. Um, and so what we're talking about, especially when you look at the topic of the cases that are gonna be there, which are emergency and plenary orders of protection, um, we have a real opportunity to really give them a space because you have obviously victims, victims, families, kids. And so we'll, we're always work, willing to work on that, trying to get it down. Mm -hmm. Frog? I don't want to get too far off topic, but whatever happened to the, the uh, cafeteria using that space? Well, you know, Doug, I, we, we're looking, we always look at any space. So <clears throat> Doug, you want to come? I mean, during COVID, uh, what we did is we used, and I'm actually, I'll just turn it over to Doug. Can you let them know about that? You know, during the shutdown and everything, we used a cafeteria for our jury assembly room uh, to keep people there and, and uh, socially distant. We are currently, we do have a, a working cafeteria in the facility. Uh, they feed our jurors, they do feed some of the public. 
every day. So, so it's, it's needed. As right. And you know, we put in partitions to make conference rooms for mutual ground AID to meet with our clients. Too. Yeah. You just hear different, yeah, different right. uh, opinions from different people. So, well, we, we have, we look at that space all the time, to be honest with you. I mean, and we use that part, we use partitions during COVID when we had so many interpreters. So we're constantly trying to figure out how to, cut that space because it's a huge amount of space that's not utilized a ton. You know, if you go in there at lunchtime, is it utilized? It sure is. If you go down there at 10 o'clock, if you go down there at three o'clock, it's, it's not. And so when we're looking for space, we're constantly looking to anything we can do to put people and we're going to continue to do that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah. Oh, Madam Chair. Um, it oh. took uh, one uh, one comment and a question. Is the question first? Is the child care center still open, or is that still shut down? No, it's been open, and it's it, it is receiving children on a daily basis. And that is, as everybody remembers, you have to walk through the cafeteria to get to the child care center. I know there's a, another entrance yeah. to that, uh, but that's a very usable space. Um, the other is that my comment is this is a want. It's a need. I should. It's a need. It's not a want. Um, we have to do this. Uh, so I think with that in mind, I absolutely, I agree that uh, efficiency and cost savings are critically important, always are. Um, but that'll be something that will be reviewed as we get further down the line. And I'm going to ask sure. Mr. Froz, do you have, or I mean, Mr. Fonstock, start with an F. So just to put it into some perspective, I believe that that space is somewhere just under 3,000 square feet, maybe 2,500 square feet. It's about 40 by 60, I think. I don't know if that's correct. Doug might be able to correct me, but it's a, it's a large space. I mean, it's not like a just a small room. So it's similar, similar, a little bit wider maybe and uh, similar, Doug. Yeah. Okay, and then Mr. Martin for and final. We're doing a facility study, right? So some of these questions we asked today to be addressed by the long-term analysis that we hopefully are yes going to have in place yes because we're all kind of whistling in the dark everybody everybody can see a pockmark of it's open space you know and and uh, and, and and need and everything we we need a plan um so that we're not and and, and i know this is this is an emergency we've got to do it it's got to be done it's not a plan it's just somebody dropped a bomb on the roof and we've got to <laughs> We have to defuse it right away. Right. So, but we need a plan here, if uh, because we've we've got we have space all over the place in bits and pieces, and and maybe it's sufficient, maybe it's not. But we've got to have a plan, or it's it, we're going to be somehow or other we're going to be frittering away a lot of money. Well, and the only thing that I'd like to add to that, and it goes back to what you talked about bonding and whatnot, is you guys have been great about coming over and looking at the space and taking tours. Um, when we talk about adding employees, we have no space for those employees. So it's one of those things where uh, I couldn't agree with you more, Mr. Martin, about the planning and we're trying to do that. And this is one of those things I wish we had some other option. Um, we don't. Um, but when we talk about adding those extra employees to the state's attorney's office, the public defender, the circuit, not the circuit clerk, because they're not in that building, but also court services, there really is no place to put them right now, but that's really the conversation after we defuse this bomb, then it's, it's going to be on to the next one because we're going to have to figure out where, where those employees are going to be placed. And, and would there be, uh, would it be appropriate to have a limit on it? Or I'm just asking this, say no more than $850,000 or something like that. Cause we, everybody says, well, we don't want it to get away from us. But does that come into the, at this point or in finance that we want to say that we don't want to spend more than a certain amount? Mr. Chairman, this is Roger again. I think Ron you Stein? could you could make that. Uh, is that reasonable, or is that just you could make that assumption and pass it to along to finance with that recommendation? But ultimately, they would know the financial part of it better than anyone. So, yeah. um, I would like to say that we could separate the construction, you know, from the tech, so that you clearly define that there's seven hundred seventy-seven thousand for the office space or the courtroom renovation, and then the balance would be for the technology. And that's what this resolution calls for 777 anyway. So it, yes, so. and it does not address right. the technology. So that would be an addition right. as far as budgeting. Yeah. Okay, well, I we've gone around a couple of times, I think. Is that 
we're in consensus, so I'm going to call for a uh, roll call on this. Berman? Yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Braz? Braz, yes. Gums? Martin? Martin, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Well, great. Thank you, Judge Hall. It's Thanks good. for coming over and helping explain it to us. Oh. Things are really important. It's great to see everybody and always willing to any questions or if you want to stop by, please do. Thank you. Okay. You guys Thank can you. take your suits off now. I, I think we're setting up a tour right now money. for 101. <laughs> Aren't we? Everybody wants to go. Or what was the, what's the, what's the room? 101? 005. 001. 001. Okay. Admin committee tour. Look for us. Great. Thank you. Okay. Then we'll, uh, thanks Judge Hall and, uh, there's no other comments on that subject. Uh, we'll go back to our regular scheduling, regularly scheduled meeting. And with facilities man, management, that it would be Roger Fonstock. Okay. So I think we handled the um, item A1, which was the addiction treatment center lease. We have two facility usage requests. One is for Geneva Community Chest for a run. Uh, that one is for July 16th, and the other is facility usage for the chicken run at the government center also. It is uh, April 30th. Both of those uh, were submitted and we're recommending just the consent of the administration committee to allow them to use the facilities. By consensus? Yes. Yeah. And Mr. Martin? I just want to clear here. I'm on the board of directors of the Geneva Community Chest and on the 5K committee, so I'm going to be abstaining from... <laughs> Offering a consensus. It's not your donut. But day. you better give approval, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> now we know why it, it is a donut dash, right? <laughs> okay, well then, uh, if there's no comments beyond that, I'll ask for a consensus. Is there any opposition to that online? Or what is the chicken run? What is a chicken when, run? April 30th. But who's sponsoring that? The Chicken Run is, uh, we had a uh, Mary Agnes Zelmer uh, Farm Bureau put in the petition for that. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the flyer. I don't know if you can read yeah, the thanks. detail, fine print, but we could get you a copy. Um, there is a, uh, uh, some sponsors listed on there. I know they have uh, Dick Pond Athletics is listed. So this is a sponsored race. This is not a benefit for a not-for-profit. No, they look for sponsors. Mm -hmm. I think they look. Oh, yes. it's probably so it is a sponsored a race, yeah. Cass is mentioned on there. Is it? At bottom of the first paragraph. Yeah, I can't read it. <laughs> we could, I guess we, yeah, Blair, could you zoom in and see who the insurance is with? That would be the Chicago Race Management. Is the insured the, in the in, if you go up a couple yeah, well, Chicago ma race management is the management company which runs the race there'll be a separate keep going race management right there at the bottom Casa Garden of Hope or is that oops maybe that's just where they're meeting well will this yeah. nothing will disturb the Casa guy so that doesn't sound like it's for them or won't disturb the garden oh, okay. <laughs> will not, or will this will not disturb I think this is just a sponsored race and not a fundraiser. Hmm. That's what it appears to be at first, first glance. If you can send that to us, that'd be great. I'm just curious. Sure. I'm not saying Absolutely. it's, it's yeah. we should not. It is in the it. agenda as well on page 46 of 205. Can I suggest we give consensus for both. Mm -hmm. Okay, then hearing no objection. Had it before. We have a consensus for both of them. The rubber chicken sounds really interesting. Grab a rubber chicken and win. There you go. That's my kind of day. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> we will have two races. Uh, we got uh, the uh, donut dash on July 16th and chicken run on April 30th. They'll both be <coughs> at the government center. The next item is a resolution authorizing a contract extension for King County carpet replacement. And I ask for a motion and a second for the discussion of that. And a motion and a second, please. Herman moves. Herman? Second. Ross second. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Mr. Chairman, the, the uh, resolution is for a one year extension with Family Flooring of America in an amount of $150,000 or not to exceed $150,000. This is for our regular scheduled carpet replacement and it's a budgeted expense. Um, in talking with the staff, they recommended Family Flooring of America just renew their extension. Uh, they do good work and they're satisfied with the work. So we're recommending that extension and it's budgeted expense for 2022. Okay. Are there any questions for Mr. Ponstock? Madam Chair? I have just one general comment. If we are seriously looking, seriously looking and not just having a conversation about a new facility, government center facility, should we be putting money into our facilities, maintenance, absolutely, general maintenance, upkeep, et cetera, to keep it uh, appropriately run and manage the heat, cooling, et cetera. But should we do aesthetics carpeting if we are seriously looking at having a new facility? And I think that perhaps is a, a thoughtful conversation because I know we've been dancing around this for a long time. I know the board has uh, for many years. And perhaps it's time that either say we're gonna be doing it and start developing that or not. And say, well, we'll do it in five years. Open to the floor for a little discussion. The way you've posed the question, if, if we are in fact serious about it, then I think the simple answer is, you know, no, we should not be. I, I was hesitant even yesterday about seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of you know cameras and fancier doors, but security and safety are take a little higher place than carpet. So um, I think that's a good discussion to have. I think this is more on carpet. I mean, I understand how that fits into it, but <laughs> yeah. uh, this is for an extension of the carpet, and we can get that as a discussion item somewhere in the uh, in our minutes. In the admin, I see that as an appropriate thing, but I'd like to get through the business of the of the day. Do you have a comment, Mr. Martin? I, I do. I, I think that the reason we've commissioned the facilities review is so we can all sit and make a rational decision about what we want to do in the future. So I agree that we shouldn't, if the decision is going to be that we're going to do something else, that we shouldn't be uh, adding to expenses related to this building as it now exists. But I think we as I said before, we need a plan first before we, None. before we, yeah, and we, and we've got it in, in the, it's coming. So yeah. sure. let's get the, the assessment and the master plan. I had talked to Jason Dwyer from white and company, and I told him that he has to come next month to the administration committee and report where he is at with both of those projects, the assessment of the buildings and the, the master plan. And I told him that I am sure that the administration committee will invite you to participate in a committee of the whole meeting to explain the process and where you're at. Idea. So I, he's expecting that. Uh, he is traveling this week. He wasn't available to come today, but I told him he absolutely has to be here at the next meeting. I originally wanted him here today. Um, but regarding the carpet, a lot of the carpet is repaired uh, on a case by case. Uh, scenario so it's damaged from water or from you know leaks or other issues uh, sometimes it's carpet that's just so old and worn that they need to replace it to make it a suitable office environment um, so those are the types of things that are going on this isn't planned like renovation this is repair and replace existing carpet that's damaged or worn beyond use so i don't know that you would be out of these buildings um, in the near future that it's going to take a while to once you develop a master plan and you decide you want to pursue it even if you pursue it i don't think you'd uh, you know complete that process in three to five years it would take to do that um so in the interim you know replacing carpet repairing carpet we can definitely assess it case by case and make sure that we're not you know renovating to the extent where we would you know be wasting our our money at the point that, that we're re renovating something that doesn't need to be. I wasn't suggesting yeah. that we just shut things yeah. off, but I just, it, it's got to be in the context sure. of, of knowing what the future holds. You know, we've talked about some stuff today that just kind of piques my curiosity. Yes. You know, if you've got this possibility of 
of a building in the industrial park in the east side of Aurora. We've got a health department building that we know is deficient. Do we need that whole building for the treatment facility? Do we, does the, can the health department utilize? I mean, there's a whole bunch of questions uh, that, that, you know, sure. they, they'll, they, they need an answer so that we can sit and say, here's what we're gonna be doing for the next 10 years here. So boards can agree. make a plan. Okay. Then I'm gonna call the question then. Berman? Yes. Davis? Yes. Braz? Martin? Martin, yes. Caius. Caius, yes. It's approved. Approved. So, Mr. Chairman, the yes. uh, item 5E is a presentation, and this is for the uh, um, Geneva Creek Stabilization Project. We have um, Mr. Rob Linke from uh, Water Resources and the Energy Environment. Rob's here. He's going to be talking about the creek. It's actually located here at the government center. For those of you that haven't walked it, it's um, this direction. I guess that's south west, somewhere in that direction. Um, but it's a creek that runs down the side of the government center property, and it also runs through the forest preserve property. Uh, the path that is along there goes to what would be the the grotto from the original uh, seminary campus here that was constructed. The grotto itself is on the forest preserve property, uh, but the, there's a path and another creek and other things, um, including like footpath bridges and things along the way. So Rob and a group of us with uh, Monica uh, Myers from the forest preserve, I think Chairman Caius was there and a couple of others, but we walked this and we're looking at it and had, you know, obviously for, for a reason, there was some concern. So Rob's going to present and talk about what we're, we're looking at in terms of the creek and stabilization and, and some of the, the amenities that are over there. Uh, and then we'll have a discussion about some of the next steps. So Rob, I'll, I'll be happy to turn it over to you. Thank you, Roger. Um, good morning, members of the committee. Um, normally, uh, I think this is my first time coming to this committee. Normally, I'm at the uh, development committee and we're talking about projects to address drainage infrastructure issues on um, other properties throughout the county. This is the first time uh, that we're here talking about uh, drainage infrastructure on county owned property here, the government center itself. Glad so I'm going to run through. Glad some... you're here. We don't bite. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go through uh, some slides here. If I can get this. Yeah, Blair, can you make that full screen and let's see? Slideshow, there you go. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so um, Roger had already kind of stolen some of my thunder, so thank you for, for laying that out. I'll, I'll have some slides to go with some of the description that he had uh, given. Uh, if I go to the next slide to give some spatial context to this. So as Roger had mentioned, we're talking about uh, Geneva Creek, which runs along the southern border of the King County property and then through the Gunnar Anderson Forest Reserve property before it uh, discharges into uh, the Fox River. Geneva Creek itself through the two properties is about 1300 feet in length. This is an urban stream. Uh, the drainage area actually for this is about a thousand, maybe a little over a thousand acres. If you guys can picture the intersection of Route 38 and Randall Road up there by the Meyer and the Jewel Osco. That's actually the headwaters um, for this stream. So all of that drainage comes through um, that portion of the city of St. Charles and through Geneva, through the uh, Geneva Country Club or the golf course there and makes its way down here. And of course, uh, the King County property here, the government center is at the receiving end of all of that drainage. And uh, the uh, stream channel itself uh, has a, a long history here on the property. I think there really hasn't been anything done. I think, again, as Roger mentioned, many people haven't really ventured down there. There is no formal trail system down there. There's some footpaths um, that are remnants from the original usage of the property and some, some uh, bridge crossings in that. Um, but it's largely been an area that really hasn't been utilized. Uh, the key feature on the site is actually just off the edge of the King County property, which is the grotto, which I have highlighted there. And then the slide before you can see the picture of that. So this is standing in the stream, looking up at the grotto. Um, and that's really gained some interest um, over the last several years. I know, I think when I started here in 2014, it was fairly overgrown. And over the time here, it's been uh, 
Uh, there's been a lot of clearing that's occurred, a lot of activity and some restoration work. Um, I would go out during uh, lunch times and uh, go for a walk. I think as many county employees would down through, and we've seen a lot of people down there clearing uh, the grotto. So with that added interest down there, there's um, been a lot more notice taken on what's happening to the creek, which is immediately adjacent to the grotto and impacts uh, the uh, in, informal footpath uh, that are used to access that. So zooming into this a little more, so this is kind of turned um, a little bit of an angle there just so we can fit on the slide. We see the areas in red, the, the blue shows the creek running through the, uh, the site through the two properties. The grotto's highlighted there in the, with a little yellow icon. The orange represents the informal footpaths that come through the, uh, the site. And then the red represents areas of severe erosion. Um, I'll just kind of quickly go through a couple of the slides coming going from upstream or the west end to the downstream end on the east, just highlighting some of the erosion. This is where it comes under Route 38, the large uh, culvert uh, from the city of Geneva, and some erosion that you can see there, partially in the right-of-way, partially on the county's property. As we move down through, this is the first bridge. This is an existing footbridge there. Uh, the abutments uh, are... <clears throat> Well, let's just say the bridge is there. Um, it's not really 100% stable. The abutments have been sort of undermined over the years. We believe a lot of the boulders in that that you'll see in many of these pictures, um, we believe that those actually were put in as part of like some, they're imported, they're not natural. They're not uh, glacial boulders from the system. So we think they were put in in the you know 30s, 40s and 50s, that kind of thing. But as the stream has um, changed over time with the, uh, you know, the flashiness that's associated with all the runoff that comes in from that urban watershed, again, going all the way up there to the, the Jewel Asco site, um, and without any maintenance or management of this area, um, there's been a lot of erosion occurred, and to the point here, you can see the footpath has actually um, been completely, uh, or almost completely undermined there, um, as well as the bridge itself. There's a lot of historic uh, infrastructure. I'm not even really sure what the concrete post is in there, but that actually used to be upright on the side of the stream. And now it's actually in the stream as it's kind of meandered over to the side. There's been a lot of erosion. Uh, you can see here, it's about a five to six foot um, vertical stream bank height where the stream is actually trended or eroded to the, uh, to the north as we travel downstream. And then there's some very large areas. This is probably the worst one. You can see there's our 15 foot survey rod that I put on the opposite side of the bank. So there is um, a couple of areas where we have some real extensive loss of the stream bank. So all that material is washed down into the stream and then down into the Fox River and contributes to the, to the water quality problems that we have in the river um, relative to the Kane County property. Certainly, um, you know, it's a pretty massive uh, uh, area of erosion and uh, potentially a public safety issue there for anybody that would be accessing that part of the property. Um, this is the bridge number two. So this is also on the actual Kane County uh, Government uh, Center campus. And this bridge was washed out a few years ago. And you can see uh, the, uh, the, the users of this area that frequent this have actually kind of made a makeshift bridge with some uh, timbers and uh, some kind of a, an old fence or something like that. So there's people that are continuing to go down there and, and use, this, uh, use this area. And then as we get down, uh, this is just showing the, the footpaths. Again, these are not maintained trails. There is no facilities management or King County Forest Preserve staff that we're aware of that do any kind of management or maintenance of these areas. So these things are just the old paths that were left over from the previous owner of the, uh, of the, the, the property and then the continued uh, access from you know, any, uh, any of the public that, that use those. Why, why is it painted blue? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, that would be graffiti users or... of the property. Uh, there is some uh, occasional uh, graffiti that occurs, but yeah, that's, I believe uh, somebody, uh, that was an attempt to cover up some previous graffiti in that area. And then you'll see, for example, like there's a, a very large old um, dead tree that had fallen across the path years ago. And again, since this isn't an area that's formally maintained or managed, you know, people just kind of step over those and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, getting down to the grotto itself. So this would be standing on the Kane County government campus property at proper. So this is standing on the, on the county's property and looking at the forest reserves property. You can see the, the stream bank erosion. This is, we, we estimate this is moved laterally or, or horizontally anywhere from five to eight feet um, as it's continuing to kind of chew into that, uh, that Northern bank. 
and so much so that it's actually threatening the access um, to the grotto itself. Think of the next slide here, if you look on the on the right there, you can see these are the steps going away from the grotto. So on the right, the grotto would be directly behind me in the photo. And literally now the steps are at the point where if you keep going, you, it's basically a seven foot vertical drop into the uh, into the stream channel. So, so this is kind of where the interest um, has come from in terms of asking these questions about what, what's happening here and what potentially needs to be done. Um, there used to be a path on that photo on the right. Um, there was a three foot wide gravel path that went up, that kind of wound up on a long, next to the grotto so that you didn't have to use any kind of stairs or anything. And you can see now that um, path is precipitously uh, on the edge of the uh, stream channel. The only other access to the grotto is immediately um, off to the side. So if you're looking at that photo on the left, this, there's essentially, a, a, it used to be stairs. They've actually taken out the limestone steppers, but just off the right side of the grotto, on that photo on the left, and this shows you on the right what that looks like now. So really, the access to that is is being maintained by the root structure of those uh, those smaller trees there at, at this point. And then this is just to the downstream. So this is on the Forest Reserve property on Gunnar Anderson, and then the parking lot with the little circle um, uh, down at the bottom of this hill there is off to the left of this. The creek is on the right, and again, there's some continued uh, extensive erosion along the uh, Forest Reserve's property as well. The stream itself is split about two thirds of that. 1300 feet is on King County property and then one third is on the Forest Preserve. Uh, this is just to summarize some of the information. Again, we, we know that there's a lot of usage of the grotto. There are visitors that come to the grotto and that's kind of the primary drawdown there. We know that the paths themselves are not maintained by anybody um, and there's no records of that in terms of the Forest Preserve or King County staff. We know that visitors that go there, we've seen evidence they actually are when trees fall across the paths and that there's somebody's going out with a chainsaw every now and then and cutting those up. So we've saw evidence of that. And again, the uh, the temporary uh, uh, repairs or crossings, if you will, the makeshift crossings for the, the bridge that's been washed out and that. Um, in terms of, I guess, options or things to consider, certainly the first consideration would be to do nothing and just let it continue to do what it does. Um, there's certainly no cost uh, involved with that, but we've seen that the stream has changed even just in the eight years that I've been here, um, in part because of some of the changes and you know, we're getting these more intense storms that are happening year after year. Uh, we had a little bit of a reprieve in 2021, but in the three previous years, we had some really bad storms that came through and that's when we saw a lot of changes in this section, that's when we lost that uh, that bridge number two that had completely blown out. So that's kind of the first alternative, and then we have kind of three other alternatives. At the at the, I guess the low end, one one consideration would be is to just go in and kind of triage and fix these areas. For example, around the grotto, where where there are people that are accessing that site, um, and to address that immediate safety concern. And then at the opposite end of the spectrum, would be doing a full restoration of that. Uh, stream corridor of that that piece of uh, drainage infrastructure that moves through the uh, the county enforcer property, and then certainly um, there would be some uh, some type of a middle ground in between, and maybe doing a phased approach and only fixing the key areas, and then addressing some of those other things um, as you saw fit. So our our recommendation is Roger and I and the others that were down there looking at that. Um, what we're proposing to do is. Uh, to hire a, an environmental consultant, a, a, an engineering firm to actually do essentially a phase one assessment of this to say, look, these, you know, we know where the bad areas are, but to basically give us a better idea of how bad these are and what some of the options would be. And then the costs associated with those options, again, with getting input from you all in terms of what the uh, overall intended mm -hmm. or projected use and desires would be for that, that portion of the property. And with that, I'll turn it over to Roger. Okay. Questions? Summon up or any, anybody have any questions for either Roger or, uh, yeah, right. Rob. Well, maybe for collectively for, I mean, you were there, Monica Myers was there. Uh, did the Forest Preserve weigh in on, you know, they may have expertise on staff to avoid hiring another engineer to tell us these things. Well, that uh, something that was, already discussed i refer that to the staff but um i think we want to work in consort with the county on i think uh, 
based on what we've we've uh, understood to this point getting this kind of preliminary assessment of what is the condition and what are the types of things that are done to remedy this type of uh, issue would be good research for us we i talked with rob about getting um two or three uh, estimates for that type of, of work and getting proposals that we could bring back to create a budget for this. This is not something that is in any particular budget to do remediation or uh, stabilization of the creek or even to work, you know, we're, we're not in the business of creating paths and, and uh, uh, trails. So the good part for the county is that the grotto and the path um, on the forest preserves part of this is is in much better condition and it's on flat ground doesn't cross streams so there's a logical path from the circle drive down below that goes straight to the grotto which is relatively you know a good path let's say the erosion of the trees the makeshift passing of the creeks and other things i think are the parts that we were most concerned about the erosion and trees falling and the the proximity of the erosion to the grotto is kind of at the line where um, the county and the forest preserve meet. So most of that bad erosion right by the grotto is like right on the line where we meet. So that's probably the highest priority. Um, but I think that what we would get from uh, Rob would be the proposals for that initial study. And I think that the work to do that is in the 10 to $20,000 range, but we won't know until he gets the proposals. And then we would bring those back for consideration because they're going to tell you kind of a rough order of magnitude of these. How, how much does this involve if you start engineering the solution to fix? Or do you only target certain phases of this to protect um, certain amenities that you want to protect and then lastly um, because of the the hazards of the crossings and the rain flows and stream and also the the height of some of the erosion we had discussed closing the path and posting some signs that say that the path is closed so as you enter the path from behind the memorial out here and head down through the forest you'll find the first pedestrian bridge which is in you know our, our first crossing path and it's in better condition than the second but the railings and the bridge itself is not in uh, good repair and it is probably you know, a liability the second passing is not a passing it's somebody threw some what looks like a piece of an old door across the creek it's probably more uh, you know a, a, <clears throat> rusted a, a landfill rusted. <laughs> you know so so you know trying to uh close the path to get it to where we don't have anybody back there trying to cross these things and getting injured would be a, a, probably our, our first step, which we talked about that day. So we have some signs to put up there. Basically, just, they just say path closed. Um, and there's still access from near the river on the, on the east side uh, that, that people could still take. Um, but that was something that we wanted to propose as well. And then also getting the study to kind of understand what the rough order of magnitude of this would be. And I, I think we'll see this on the Forest Preserve side as a, from a perspective of the Forest Preserve, which is sure very close, because it butts right up to it, but it includes the grotto. Yeah. And that step right around the grotto there is, is uh, we well, saw the slide there, it's, yeah. it's eight inches wide and way down. Right. Mr. Martin? Uh, in, in the short term, I'm definitely in favor of closing those, closing that pathway to the point of even if we've got capacity in-house taking the bridges out i mean just not leaving them because to me they're an attractive nuisance um in in the long term i think this you know uh, we've talked about a plan here we need we need to have an idea as to what happens to this campus in the future if we're going to keep it forever that may impact what we want to do if this is going to be sold in the context of a move and it becomes someone else's issue i can tell you that that stream has because uh, I see it all the time. Uh, I play golf at Geneva Golf Club. Mm -hmm. When you say it drains up near Randall Road, and there was a point in time when the jewel store dumped gallon after gallon of sour milk into the storm sewer, and it all ended up in our pond. So I can tell you that's how direct the drainage is. And I have can remember more than one time 
after heavy rainstorms crossing Cheever and the creek crosses the road uh, above, above ground. So it, it has immense uh, changes in, in, in flow. And uh, we probably, at least in my mind, are gonna end up saying we've got to, until we know what we're doing, we at least got to shore up the erosion because it's, uh, it's crazy what it does. But I would support getting the, the bids so we know what we're talking about. Okay, Mr. Fraz. I, I, I guess I kind of started the ball rolling on this talking to Monica, thinking it was on Forest Preserve property, <laughs> mostly about the erosion by the grotto, because mm -hmm. again, I've seen it move about 10 feet over the years. Um, but just a little background, the, um, those big boulders you see that aren't natural, those were the original, there used to be two big masonry boulder bridges um, that washed out over time and you know the, the oh. boulders all separated. There you go. And that, that path was the stations of the cross. So they would have a mass at the grotto and then do the stations of the cross down the path. And that, that concrete base you see is one of the cross bases. Right. I know you had mentioned about the stream moving over time too, and um, I didn't have time to put it in this slide, but I did see that. And I think, as you had mentioned, after, uh, after one of the big floods, I don't know if it was in, if it was the 96 flood or if it was before that, but the stream channel actually used to come this way and it went across this property. And then um, you can see that um, very uh, intentionally in the, uh, in the old aerial photos yeah. that we have for this yeah. area, but then there was a flood and there was a fence on the lot line and during a huge flood, it clogged with brush and debris and the creek made a left-hand turn and in one night dug that channel that these got highlighted all the way to the river in one night. Um, so uh, the neighbors, the neighbors suddenly didn't have a creek anymore. <laughs> and unfortunately, for the from the forest preserve's perspective, uh, the Army Corps doesn't allow people to say, "Well, the stream used to go that way," and let them put a plug in there and kick it the other way. So they're kind of forced to deal with it now. But I, I guess my thinking is uh, get get the study. But just like we've talked about, I think three different times today, um, you know, maybe building two new bridges would be very expensive. The, creeks, the creek wants to do what it wants to do, and it wants to eat up that trail. And uh, if we have the secondary access to the grotto, but um, I would say protect the grotto and, and then uh, maintain it. And, and again, that's a decision by the Forest Reserve since that's on the yeah. Forest Reserve side. Mr. Froz? And then, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> So this I mean, is Mr. Rod, Roger Fonsack 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 again. Yeah, Fonsack just Fonsack. to clarify for the path closed signs, we were, if you could, yeah, that's the slide I wanted. Thank you. Um, the dotted yellow or dotted orange that you see as you go to the upper left, you'll see where it comes off the front of the uh, campus here. So we're thinking one at that point, one at the uh, crossing just below that where bridge number one is. Okay. A sign there saying path closed. Uh, and then down where the second crossing, where that fork is between the, the, that one piece of the fork goes over to private property, but at that fork before the second crossing, and then down as you get to where it's really eroded by the uh, grotto, we'd put another sign. I don't know if that's too many signs, but it's at the points where we know that somebody, if they are down there and trying to cross, uh, those are probably the pain points that we would worry about. And it would be clear that the path is closed at that point. Better to err on the side of caution because now that we've discussed this in an open sure. meeting, we are we, we, have we are right. responsible and are culpable for. I think the signs are ready too, marketing. aren't they? They're here. The signs are here. I so. walked it. There's no safe place, no safe way to walk those right. paths. And I think the Forest Preserve has signs as well for their side of the. Yeah, I believe they were having a diff, maybe a different approach about where or what to sign because their their entry is actually in I think the fairest condition as right. opposed that's the f best way to say it uh, as opposed to our entrance which is on a hill going over the creek twice. Depends and on how you want to get into it over the roots yeah. or right next to the seven foot bank. Yeah, right next to the drop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. All right, thank Madam you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Um, I agree with uh, what Mr. Martin has said. And I'll say it again, uh, we should not put money into restoration or repair unless we know our long-term plan and its needs. I think that's critical. We uh, forefront on, until a decision is made. Uh, the grotto, however, has gotten a lot of press lately because of its restoration. It has a, an active following and a, a local all the way from Batavia throughout the Fox Valley of people doing this. So we have to make sure that there is Forest Preserve, it's on Forest Preserve property, that there is a, a safe and adequate and 
path to get there. Uh, the uh, signage needs to say, because uh, I think there's right now just a little yellow sign that points to that entry of the path um, off of the circle driveway. Perhaps we can uh, actually the forest preserve if they'd like forest to do preserve. say, you know, grotto this way so that people are directed. Um, I also um, think that that one bridge that's with the, the rustic bridge with the, the fallen trees and the door should be eliminated as quickly as possible. Uh, it, it looks like a lot of fun to cross, but uh, I would suggest okay. not. Um, <laughs> Uh, and the other bridge, I'm not sure what the cost would be to remove that, but that may be something we want to consider. This is wood. Yeah. Part but there's, the, there's always a cost. There's part of the long-term plan we're talking about, at least on the, the county side. I, that would be our other direction is, do you want the bridges, you know, removed both? One, certainly the plank. Mm -hmm. And then secondarily, the other bridge is, is more substantial, would yeah. require some more. Uh, probably some more thought about what what it would take to take it out, but if that's the yeah, direction gonna... that the committee gives us, we could get you know the the proposal to take those the one we won't get a proposal for. It's just picking up the wood, but the other one we might have to have somebody look at how you would take it apart, other than just go out there and dismantle it. The direction so far is signs, at least signs are done to, to I'll have that done. Keep people from going in there. And Mr. Berman, yes, Berman here. Uh, We'll find out, I guess, what it's going to cost to do these things. But if we restore that, wouldn't that increase the value of our property and in, in, uh, future sales or future? Well, it's forest for the it's on the forest preserve. The, so the, the, grotto the, the, the grotto is. Well, but the rest. Are you, of the, are you talking about the bridges and things? Right, yes. Well, it depends on what they use it for, I guess. I, well, one Mr. of the conversations Ponsa. that we had about this was doing it in phases, but at the same time, if you repair one of those eroding banks, mm -hmm. it's going to create, you know, a rock kind of bank that's going to redirect the erosion to another soft area, you know, of, of the creek. It, it, so, you know, as you, you're just moving it, you know, to another area. So I think it'd be you know, primarily hardening the area, you know, and, and reinforcing the area around the grotto. And then the other alternatives that are, you know, on the other parts of this are, you know, creating like these swells and areas where water is eroding and pooling. And it's just, you know, it is, it's just taking its natural course, but they're not threatening structures. So, and if you don't, you know, I guess the question is, you know, the grotto is on the forest preserve property. It's their structure. Yeah. So. Okay. Storm sewer. So bridge uh, number two is the one that we would remove the boards and then bridge number one we'd need to look at whether or not that can be removed with removed the, or you wouldn't want to repair it because that implies no, that you're putting it back no. in use but make it so it doesn't look like a bridge or actually yeah removed it's wooden right so like yeah. this one yeah you could just go down there as far as direction so both out. we're talking my, my recommendation would be to take out bridge number one. I bet that could be done by staff, um, put up the signs. And, but I would say the, the, as far as erosion, the, the biggest priority is right. But I think it's on the county property uh, at the front of the grotto. It starts there, yeah, on the county the property. Side, and then, yeah. and then that's, the only, so like, that's why we'll have pressing. to work together on it. But Yeah, you, you really have to do both like you said you can't really start at the property line at the forest reserve in order to stabilize it properly and make it permanent you have to wrap it up around so it's basically if you go back to that slide it's basically 50 50 on uh yeah as you can see right here it's almost First spot is right at the end of that white yeah path. oh mr chairman <clears throat> yeah okay Remove. um madam bates uh can we contract with the Forest Preserve District to do this work and some onto our property? Well, that would be something. Or I'll, I'll let Mr. Bond stop. Work on that. Yeah, we work with them. We're going to be working with Proposal. them, but yeah. For today, I'm I'm most interested, and in, we'll put the four signs in. We would remove the two bridges. Yes. Yes. We well, consensus to do that. Yes, that, that's what I. I just wonder right. about the second bridge. It's really just concrete remnants, so. I mean, they could. It's not to be removed. You just remove the plywood, is yes. what you're talking about. Yeah, for that. So yeah not we're not really removing the concrete, just the wood structure. No, no, yeah. Yeah, that's just yeah. to make but it for look both like, bridges. Because it's looking like a bridge, yeah. kind of. 
Mark for both bridges right after the meeting. When I was 16, it would look like a fantastic it. bridge, something <laughs> challenging to go across, right? But to be so, clear, both bridges, one and two. So, that, so they won't look like bridges, right? But they'll, that's they'll just be the concrete or the mm, rock, right? And you're not removing any of the stone. Are, yeah, and Madam Bates, um, are we going to make anybody really mad at us, like maybe the Knights of Columbus, if we take out their bridges? But, they'll still have access. They can go. We are way. talking with the Knights of Columbus. So the Forest Preserve side, the staff is talking with the Knights of Columbus. They've been approached by the uh, nature of the uh, risk that's involved. And that that will that will have to be addressed in one way or another, and we want to work with them. And I believe they're accepting of it because it, they have seen. Well, they're they're in there all the time. So talk about that. And our and our priority is to, uh, force preserve side is to save the grotto. I believe we don't want to have anything happen to it, and we have an agreement with them. Oh. But just, yes, Mr. Fonstock. Hmm. Mr. Kenyon just asked about the bridges conditions, and just the the first bridge number one the reason we're talking about whether go not, back to that slide yeah whether or not that one is um salvageable the, the railings on that are all loose and falling apart the wood is rotting um the deck is not as bad but the the railings are all in pretty bad repair and that's the question is if you go in and repair it are you saying that it's suitable for this use and you're leading people to where you don't want them to be Right. And the only thing to get to next is further in with another. It's even worse. Yeah. 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 And we're telling them not to go in and then we're saying, okay, look, so here's for a, now we could close. You could just close that and say it's closed and just leave it. But it, you know, put the path close sign right in there and leave that one. And the railing is bad. I'm apprehensive about leaving something that we know is a hazard and yeah. putting a sign in front of it. I just think we're leaving ourselves exposed and, and, you know, we owe it to be a little less crass about it, we owe it to the public to maintain a, a safe facility. Yeah. And if we've got a bridge over our creek that's unsafe, even if we put a sign and say it's unsafe, it just, to me, it doesn't sound like sound risk management. Much involved with getting rid of that. Got a chainsaw? Yeah. It's just a wooden structure. I, You're yeah. not trying to move you above. I like to do it internally. I mean, I, I hate the thought of going out for bids. <laughs> well, we don't need bids. It won't, wouldn't be that expensive that anyway, I'm sure. Yeah. I think if you lean on the railing, it'll probably come down. <laughs> we have volunteers from the committee? Uh, no. Okay, so consensus okay. is to remove that bridge and the, the other bridges. one. And, and then... Signs. Signs. Bridges. And Signs. then the study, we're going to be bringing back the proposals for that, so you can consider those. And if you want to pursue a partnership with the Forest Preserve or one of the studies, we'll have that information available as soon as... Um, we get those proposals. What back. would be the extent of the study? Would it be just by the grotto? Or the, you know? the first part would be the proposal to look at the stream creek stabilization, and it would be a proposal to look at this holistically and then recommending uh, to pursue areas. You know, I'm just, so. I, I don't know. I just think, say the study costs $20,000. Yes. If we haven't concentrated on just what we're talking about by the grotto. It might be, be $5,000. Yeah. Well, and I, I can answer that a little bit. Um, when we're talking about stream stabilization, it is important that, you know, we don't just look right at the one area that we have, you know, where you have the acute problem. You know, it's kind of like, it's almost like a, a, you know, your own body, your own health, right? You don't just focus necessarily on just the one little thing. You have to say, well, what's maybe causing the larger issue? So I think that's why it's important that they look at the, the entire stretch through there. Um, and again, the idea is that the intention of this is that they're not going to do the engineering work. They're basically doing the, this, what we call a phase one assessment. So they're going to go out first, they're going to meet with us. We're going to talk to them about all the different moving pieces and, you know, potential, um, ideas and things like that. Then they're going to go out, they're going to do their assessment of the erosion note where the spot erosion is occurring, but then look at the whole system in terms of what might be happening to give us an idea of, you know, if we don't do anything where they would expect things to get worse or how, how much worse it could be. And then um, again, giving us a range of alternatives, starting focusing on the grotto and then looking at those other areas and saying, look, this is what it would cost to fix these things as you kind of, kind of step that up. But um, so there wouldn't be any engineering that would be done, but I think that we would get um, some fairly um, reasonable or reliable costs, even at that level of assessment of, what it's going to cost 
um, to do to do any or all of those repairs. And then again, we can bring those back to the committee and review that and decide from there. I don't know how the public interfaces with this. I mean, it, from what I see on online, um, those of you guys aren't aware, we're, we're a little tied up now with this gasoline spill that's occurred out at 47 and 64. So we've kind of keep tabs on generally speaking, what's happening with the public. I know that there's um, interest in this. So I don't know how that interacts then as you move forward with changes to what's happening out here. So just throwing that out there. So, a comment, fresh comment. I just, I'm going to reiterate, I guess, that you close it down. I think ultimately the only access is going to end up being from the forest. Forest preserve. My only interest is protecting the grotto. It's already showing us what it's what it wants to do. I don't need to pay for a study to tell me that it's going to continue to erode in certain places. Water does what it does. There's no stopping it. You stop it in one spot, it goes to another. I don't need them to come do a study and tell me that. Shut it down, take the bridges out, and have them tell us their opinion of what it takes to protect the grotto. That's it. I agree. That's all I need. And, and I, I understand what, what you're saying there. I guess I would point out is that, you know, part of the mission, for example, that we do at Environmental Water Resources is we're meeting with other landowners who have similar problems and we are giving them guidance and advocating that they do projects to, again, stabilize their stream so that they're, you know, reducing the sediment input. Um, so again, it's not just about a, a, the safety aspect, it's the safety aspect for those in the immediate, the landowners themselves, but also in terms of for the larger good for the watershed. So um, I think that's, you know, one of the other motivating factors here besides the immediate safety is that uh, the county does own this part of the stream channel. And just like the Forest Preserve has undertaken other stabilization projects and that from a watershed management standpoint. So that would be the only other consideration to at least having the study done to kind of know exactly what we have and where it could go and what the options would be. And again, I know there's a lot of things to consider there in terms of the long-term use of the property, but um, anyway. Okay, Mr. I, Fraz, I, I, comment? I, I know what Rob's saying, but I gotta agree with Mark. I, I just assume let's put out the fire today and uh, get the bridges out, signs up and look at that hundred foot stretch or whatever it is um, because who knows what's going to happen? But if we were to move out of this facility, this will likely become some kind of redevelopment, and oh. likely the Geneva Park District will be looking at that as a park, and they'll probably be doing stream bank restoration and oh, thinking about paths and bridges. And I'd rather let them do it. And, and I mean, I tend to agree with <clears throat> my colleagues across the room here. The, the other thing is that. I know this is called the Geneva Creek, but until it gets to the golf club, it's a four foot drainage tile that's underground all the way from the jewel store to till it gets to the golf club. It goes into a pond and then the, the there's a stream bed that, that comes down. So, I mean, it's, it's, I know it's a Creek to me, it's a drainage ditch and I don't, I have trouble attaching uh -huh. A romantic viewpoint. <laughs> I believe it passes underneath the house over here. Oh well, yeah, there's a, there's a bridge built over it. There's a house on Cheever that's built over yeah. it. And uh, but as I say, until it yeah. gets to the Geneva Golf Club, it's a four. When it comes into the golf club, it's a four foot drainage tile with a grate in front of it. So it's gone the other three quarters of its existence through a concrete tile. Um, I I just I I always laugh when I play that course as to when are the trout ever going to come back uh, because it's just a drainage ditch. Sure, sure. But it is regulated. This no, no, I, I understand the, the Army trick Corps. bag that we're in. It's considered waters of the U.S., so we have to regulate it as an environmental resource. I know, but so. the, wa the water flow, to, to tell you extremes, the water flow is so low that there are times in the summer when the, when the creek simply doesn't exist. It is just, it's, it's a classic drainage ditch. Um, and I just want to be careful before we spend a hundred thousand bucks on it that I, I tend to agree. Let's patch it up and, okay. and decide what we're going to do with this campus first. And then 
let, let's do a phase. This, this is phase, phase one, and oh, later on we can do it. The, the, the actual I, review would be just those red areas around the grotto. Yes. Well, I, okay. as the chairman, <laughs> I, I would like to look, I would like to take the advice of our uh, environmental uh, and water management staff who is to consider the entire project. I'm not sure how expensive. Maybe we could get an idea the difference between what it would be to do the study to fix that thing and the whole and the whole project. Okay. I think that we we cut ourselves short by uh, not uh, oh, yes. considering what the staff is what is the staff is advising it. our constituents yeah. even yeah. that own property that, and we hold them to be responsible uh, on drainage things like this or water runoff that's. Uh, uh, managed by the Corps of Engineers as well, right? So, right, and again, the, you know, we, we can control the scope of this, you know, assessment, if you will. Um, and again, we can limit that and the whole intention was to provide that range of costs and alternatives. And again, um, just this conversation here will, will bear very heavily into influencing the scope and the level of effort that they would put into that. Again, considering that if, uh, if there really isn't the, the, the will, or if we know now that there's not going to be, you know, this, uh, you know, intensive effort um, expended on this. Then. As long as we know that that's available for us. And I don't tend to disagree with the members of the committee. I think you're ex exactly right. This should be the stabilized around the grotto, but I, I'd like to look at the overall picture. We can use if the it old, doesn't cost any money. We can use the old golf balls on the creek bed. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. You got a bucket of them? Madam, Ms. yeah, that, that drainage ditch probably started out as a creek and got um, covered up by whatever development happened. Each there. little piece at a time, probably. And um, there's a there's a movement to daylight some of these creeks <clears throat> um, to take them out from under those uh, culverts and try to turn them back into what they started out as. We will not be tearing out your golf course anytime soon, I'm sure. But um, I believe Rob's point is. Um, we do own this property. We need to be responsible owners. This um, erosion is causing uh, to the detriment of our Fox River, and we need to be responsible for the, the erosion that's happening on our land. I'm not a member of this committee. I will not be voting, but someday down the road, I think we need to be responsible about this erosion and fix it. So thank you. So. Signs. I know there are. <laughs> I know there are. You know, people waiting for the American uh, Rescue Plan. So we need. We have a lot of other agenda items. Right. So, just the signs, the uh, removal of the bridges, and then ultimately we'll get the proposals. Proposals. Yeah. Okay. And Which we, doesn't yeah, obligate us to do anything. No action other than just getting the proposals. So we'll get a lot of heat from the Environmental Committee if we don't. <laughs> no. Right. No we'll offense, Mr. Oh. Chairman. Yes, sir. Ma Madam, uh, yes, Alan? This, Ms. Allen? this is Alan, and I've been yes. waiting for a while, so I, 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 I don't mean to delay the committee, and I'm not on the committee, but I'd not like at to all. speak here. Um, we talk all the time about best management practices, BMPs. We say that that is what we as a county strive for. So I would like us to follow Mr. Linke's suggestion. He is an engineer with a certificate on the wall. That's why we hire him and follow a best management practice to spend $20,000 and figure out what needs to be done here, whether we do it or not. Now, we're not gonna leave this campus uh, for let's say five years. It would take us a while to build a new building. And the people who actually use this beautiful area are people who visit the Veterans Memorial and our own staff people who take their lunch break and come into this area to restore themselves so that they come, come back and do the heavy lifting for the county. So I would like to ask, what would be the cost of putting a decent railing on the bridge that exists there so that if people want to walk in that area, they can cross that bridge once or, and twice. They can just use that bridge to move around the property. Um, it, what, would, what would be the cost of, of that? Uh, as part of this project. Um, so I hope I get to vote somewhere down the line. Thank you. Oh, you'll get a vote somewhere. <laughs> Thank you for your input. It's always good insight. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we, we can and look into that. But I, I think uh, taking, you know, 
having one bridge and not the other leads a person to even further down the trail where they'd have to cross where there is no bridge. So you'd be looking at two new bridges and then the discussion was whether or not you're creating, you know, a defined trail or walkway that you have to maintain once you start putting amenities in there. Um, it's not, it's, it's a footpath. And I think the forest preserve was uh, reticent to uh, acknowledge any of this as trails. Um, and, and it's not their property, of course, but uh, would not want to even accept the, they were glad they didn't have to accept the responsibility of trying to, to uh, do anything with that trail in the condition it's in. Mr. So, Chairman, our, yeah. our staff walk around there anyway. So they will walk where it's safe. And if they walk too far and have to walk back to one bridge, that's what a walk is for. It's not that big okay. a deal. Thank you, Ms. Allen. I think we're done. Okay, I think we're set. Okay. I think we're gonna move on anyway. Yeah. We're gonna move somewhere that doesn't cost us money, just the, the signs and the study. So we uh, are beyond item E. Thank you, Rob. The, Thank uh, you, yes, Mr. Linky, that was great. Item, Thank you. Item F is a resolution authorizing the payment of invoices from Cording and Clark Associates. Uh, Associates. Can I have a motion and a second, please? Braz moves. Braz. Berman second. Berman. Okay, this is a resolution <laughs> authorizing the payment of invoices totaling forty thousand seven hundred dollars to Cording and Clark. So one-time payment. This was a project for the canopy and uh, enclosure behind the, the circuit court clerk's office. This work's completed and we have the invoices in hand. The work uh, originally was, was done, I believe, under the Corrigan and Clark extension of their agreement, um, but we're asking for specific authorization for the $40,700 to be perfectly clear that the board has approved of it. Okay, any questions, comments? Mr. Martin. I just wanna clarify, this is, this is one of the residual responsibilities that they retained when we changed architects. Is that correct? This was, um, in my understanding, it was in the transition period. I don't know if it was already started before um, we actually did the award to the three uh, architect, engineer, and construction manager at risk. I believe this happened but it was at the contract, same time. It was a contracting process at that time. They, they would have, so, so the resolution authorizes uh, them to extend their agreement for completing projects. Right. The contract itself authorizes them to be our architect, our engineer, and our contract, our, uh, uh, you know, contract management for construction management. So the contract says one thing, the resolution basically, in my opinion, um, says that they were to finish projects. I believe this was started after that period of time. So it was not a project that was being finished, but it was done under the Cordigan contract that was out there. And this was done, started, I think sometime in the fall, in the fall of last year. So, but the company that did the work is Merrillville Awning. They were the subcontractors and the payment of these invoices pending to pay the contractors that did the work. And the work is done, it's complete. The awning and enclosure has been done. Mr. Davis, my only concern in it would be if it was if they were able to link this in any way to the garage door opening situation, and it sounds like it's unrelated, completely separate, so. different building. All right. So this was grandfathered in. Well, I don't know. I describe it that way. It's invoices that are due, okay. and this was work that was done according to my understanding. There was a, a contract for architect engineering construction with Cordigan that was extended. I think the issue is that in the resolution, the extension was contingent upon it being a project that was already started. So if it's something they're closing or something they're finishing, I do not believe this was something they were closing or finishing. So that, therein lies the, the issue. So we're seeking, you know, you do have a contract in place with Cordigan that was to do this type of work. It's just that the actual resolution says for projects that they're finishing. So it's just to clean it up, make sure that we have approval of the board for $40,700 with Cordigan. No matter this project. who started it or when they started it, they did the work and it's completed. Yes, it's done. Yes, it's done. So any other questions or comments? Ms. Allen? 
Mrs. Allen? When I looked at the invoices, it looked like we that some of that $40,000 is actually paying for the awning and the hardware. And is that not correct? Is this all $40,000 just a payment to Court and Clark? Or does it include some of the, does it include the awning and stuff? So this would be the, the Maryville uh, invoices for the awning, the walls, the poles, the support, the overhead management of the project, which was done by uh, Cordigan, which was construction management. They also designed it. So it would be, you know, it would, in their contract, they're allowed or authorized to do architect, engineering, and construction. So it was done under those three uh, categories is what I would describe it as. And then they bid the awning out or priced it out through their, their process with the county. And they did the, did the work, completed it. And these are the invoices. So it's um, the entire project. The entire project, yes. So that's a pretty good deal. Mm -hmm. And the awning is done. It's up. And I believe it's to the owners and the occupant's satisfaction. I haven't heard any complaints. So I will call the question then. Berman? Berman, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Braz? Yes. Margin? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. yes. Oh, I think Deputy this... Director's report, is this something we need to deal with right now, at least in some I think degree? we'd step down to the uh, resolutions maybe and, and it... defer that and see where you'd like to be when we get the resolutions done. Okay, so let's, uh, with the uh, indulgence of the committee, we'll move down to uh, information technology. Yes. You have a discussion, fiber yes. release? So just real quickly, um, the fiber uh, optic cabling that the county uh, has installed in the ground is roughly 70 miles of fiber. It's about 75. And we, from time to time, get people asking us about leasing the strands of fiber that are in the right of way, that are in, in the duct and in the cable. Um, in the past, we had a, an agreement that the county was using to do a revenue share from people using the fiber. They would pay us a percentage of their revenue. We would like to switch to a straight lease. And in doing so, a lot of the, the overhead of, of trying to figure out how much revenue and what they've done in the last year it would eliminate that and we would do a straight lease, which is based on the value of the fiber plus maintenance. So we were hopeful that we would have that in time for this uh, committee. Um, and I, I do have information for it, but I think right now it's just premature because we don't have a copy of the draft lease. But the way the lease would work would be specific uh, pricing that's related to the, the distance of fiber that the person is looking to lease. Um, we have probably 80% of the cable is available capacity. It's not being used by the county. When we put the cable in, we put in 144 strands of fiber most places. And like I said, I think at, at most we use 24 strands of that. And then we have some other services that are on there. We partnered with uh, NIU Net from Northern Illinois University to do some education and revenue sharing at one point. Um, and again, you know, looking at it over the years, I think the, the straightforward lease of it would be just better business on our part and less overhead to manage it. We've talked to some of the different people that have an interest in it. There is a strong interest in leasing uh, of the fiber. And uh, we could show you some of the costs associated with that, but I think I would wait until we get the lease. You're asking then to defer this until our next meeting? Well, you know, that we have some people that are, would be interested in leasing it in the short term. And so I don't know if this would be something as a lease we could take to finance to explain. It's just revenue. It's not costing, you know, or it's not a, it's not an expense or an approval of a capital expense. We're talking about a financial revenue lease that someone would pay us to use um, one of the county's assets. Mr. Martin. An assumption that, that we're willing to follow the recommendation of Mr. Fonstock, I suggest we move the matter ahead. If it's okay. just a financial issue, well, let the finance. We would work with Joe Onzek to see about putting it on finance agenda to consider as a revenue uh, for lease. All right, then I'll ask okay. for a motion in a second. For the Martin motion. moves. Martin moves. Have a second. They have a second. Yeah. Any other discussion, questions? This is a discussion Comment? item, so I think it's just consent, consensus. It's a resolution. No, just the first one, A, is oh, discussion. The first one. Oh, okay. It's just consensus about the lease. I apologize. 
Yeah, okay, so then that's a consensus. We don't need a motion second. Yeah. No I objections. All right, okay. I apologize. Then item B. My item B, resolution authorizing fiber optic uh, support services contractors. This was an RFP that we put out with uh, purchasing to solicit uh, companies that do the repair, maintenance, and construction of our fiber cable. Again, it's 72 miles of fiber from Algonquin to Montgomery, uh, and it, it's all over the county. Uh, we had two responses, one from National uh, Technology and one from EX2. We're recommending that we authorize both uh, vendors for a five-year contract and not to exceed $500,000 per year. And it's a budgeted expense. This comes under our network services portion of the, the public safety sales tax. And we use it to connect our public safety organizations between Aurora, uh, the county, and all the way up to Elgin. So... Okay, then I'll ask for a motion and second on this one. Braz moves. Braz? Berman second. Berman second. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Fonstock? Hearing none, roll call please. Berman? Yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Braz? Yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Pius? Pius, yes. Yes. Okay. okay. We're on uh, to number eight, Mill Creek SSA. We have resolution A. It's authorizing have... a contract extension of Mill Creek SSA Parkway tree services. Okay, a motion? Roz moves. Roz, second? Berman, second. Berman, second. This is an existing agreement. We're asking for a one-year extension. We've reviewed this with purchasing. Um, it's here because the, the extension of the agreement, a multi-year agreement, it's uh, not to exceed $20,456.80 from Henry Tree Company. It's a budgeted expense under SSA. We'll recommend approval. SSA has approved it and they're paying for it, right? Yes. So, okay. Any questions for Mr. Bonstock? Hearing none. Roll call, please. Berman. Berman, yes. Davis. Davis, yes. Roz. Yes. Martin. Yes. Guys. Guys, yes. yes. Chairman, do we skip the, yeah, we did. the Thank public you. information officer? Report? We did, but we got our business done with now. So do we have <laughs> an item yeah. about the public information yeah. officer? Oh, you're it's oh you're reporting here. to our committee. Yes. It's been a day. Sorry. Uh, well, thank no. you. No, I'll, I'll be brief. I, I had a presentation, but we can move it to the next committee meeting. Um, we just continue on our social media channels. We've had 39 posts on social media in the last 28 days. One in particular, we spent $10 to boost on Facebook. We reached 17,000 people. People really like recycling stories. Um, we have the most uh, visitors from Elgin, and typically we have more women than men on Facebook, and the age range is 35 to 44. Um, so again, the other thing I wanted to let you know is that we are making progress in updating the Kane County web website with the help of Adam Tedder. So that's ongoing too. You can continue to see it's changing <clears throat> every day a little bit. We're cleaning it up, getting rid of old stuff, archiving and uh, moving things around. Okay, great. Thank you. Is there a chance then the next, uh, I know you were the like the last one, see that we have her closer to the front of the, so you don't have to sit, unless you want to sit through the whole damn thing to, you know. Move her up the agenda. Okay. We'll have her go first. Uh, be yeah, uh, <laughs> right behind the judge or something, <laughs> just in case. Okay. Especially well, she, if you make it that short, what the heck? Mr. Chairman, is that, the she, so she's reporting to the committee every month? That's the? Correct. I believe so. That's correct. Yes, okay. to our committee. All right, we'll add that on the agenda. Okay. Um, under, just, let's see, new business item B, because we, we, we addressed item A and there, already no earlier with right. Chief Judge yeah. Hull. Yes, we did item A. So item B, advice and consent uh, regarding procurement cards for IT, the IT department and building management. There's a, a page in the packet where we have listed the um, people in our two departments that have credit cards and the limits. And the new ordinance requires that the committee provide advice and consent about those uh, cards, limits, and the people. Blair, do you have that slide? Charles, do you have that? It's not in the packet. Okay. Let's see it. You can email it to me or email it to Blair. He can pull it up. It was just in, it's not, which is unusual. I, guess. I don't have it. <clears throat> I 
Let's see if I have it. Just give us one second. We'll have that. It's important to get this done because we are using the cards and I know the ordinance has changed. So let me see if I have it. One second. We've got time. We'll just, uh, we've lost all those people that are weak. You got oh, it, Charles. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. No, um, Mr. Leonard says we don't have time. <laughs> sorry. Somebody's shaking their head back there. Okay. Sorry, Bill. Blair, you got it? Yeah. Okay. I was going to say I've got it too. There you go. You can blow that up. This So what we're recommending is um, these uh, one-time transaction limits and monthly transaction limits. And what you'll see, there's three people with relatively large limits, myself, Charles, and John. The, um, the one-time transaction limit is $29,000 and the monthly is $45,000. I would tell you that the only time that that gets exercised is if we have uh, generally an emergency or a large purchase that we need to take care of. And it stops at $29,000 because that's the authorization before you have to go out to bid or to competitive. So, but we're recommending approval and these are all based on budget uh, availability and, and budget expenses. It's not an authorization to spend the money. It's just the limits. Okay. This is a resolution or just a... It's just advice, advice and consent. consent. Any there. questions for Mr. Fonstock on this? I support the, the proposal. I yes. support it. I do too. So no, there are no objections. So that we, that's our consent. Thank you. This will go to finance, I believe, for their advice and consent as well. Okay. Item C, discussion, County Code 248. Haven't done that yet this morning. Um, and... You, you had sent your suggestions or comments uh, yes. in a um, discussion of 2-48 brief points and discussion regarding county code. We, uh, I think uh, Mr. Davis said that this was a long-term thing, so I don't know that we need to address it today since we've run long. We're, I think we're we can still in the assembling things like right. This so part of it. has everyone on the committee gotten the? Uh, did you send that out to to them? I believe as advice? it went out. Yes. Okay, from Roger. So hopefully I'll be able to touch base with, with everybody on the committee before next time, at least to kind of get an idea. If you have anything, uh, forward it to me and I'll make sure that the, the, uh, the Jamie Labrillo gets it. And Madam Chair, comment? Thank you. Just as a gentle reminder, uh, we'd like to get this thing completed, this assessment before the new board is seated. Uh, so <laughs> you have a the next uh, November then yeah, it's the time is, is time is running short. It takes a while. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want Blair, they're, they're, they're in the packet on page 198. So it did get sent out and most of them are just the response, like reporting responsibilities clearly defined. And that was in particular what the uh, chair of the committee asked for. Yes. So these were the bullet points that I had sent to chairman Caius about 248 for consideration. Okay. It's something. Let's consider it done. Okay. But for staff to write, Liberal will get it. Okay. I can forward that to Jamie in HR. Okay. If you'd like. Okay. And if she has cotton, well, she'll give us feedback on whatever she may need. So absolutely. I think that's a good start. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we do have one item under old business. It's uh, item A, resolution. It's ratifying the county board's authorization of a wage increase for interim executive director of building management department for department heads under jurisdiction of administration committee. Oh, well, do we have to do that? Too? No, just kidding. You. Okay. Then you heard it there. Read, as read by uh, Director Fonstock. Uh, may I have a motion? A second? I'll move it. Roz seconds. Davist. Cross. And then discussion, questions. We understand what that one's all about. If there's no questions, we'll just go to the question. We'll, I'll ask for the question. Berman? Berman, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Braz? Braz, yes. Margin? Martin, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Approved. Okay. Good work. Thank you. So the only other item that we had for today was the uh, 
administration committee executive director's report, which I'm going to tell you will be an hour long discussion. Yeah. Is Plus. there, is there, are there highlights that we need to hear about right now? <clears throat> there, there are a lot of that we need to hear need about to right discussed, now. But I, you know, knowing there's a meeting that's already 25 minutes um, or so past. <laughs> um, hour. Fry, Fry speaking. Uh, what time timing on this? What, I mean, if, if it was really critical, we could, well, I hate to say it, but we could call a special admin meeting, piggyback it on some upcoming meeting. I do think it's that important. All right. I do. I think you need to have a, a discussion about um, all of the things that, and it, and it gives you time to review this a little bit more, maybe because I sent it out Friday, the final version. Um, it is uh, uh, a lot of information. There's a lot of things that we're looking at and considering. Um, so I, I think a special meeting just to go through this would probably I, be worthy. So it would be, I, have, I, have uh, to be next week sometime. Could I propose that Mr. Fonstock and Chairman Caius look at the calendar and pick a logical? Uh, I'm looking at the calendar next Tuesday after development would be the first day. Uh, there's already a meeting. After development? Uh, the elected official salary. Yes, yes, I haven't checked that out. Um, what's after development? Yes, it is. The elected official salary increase. Review. Review committee. Thank you. And is there overlap with this committee? I guess we can't do two committees. It's after development. Could be after legislative on Wednesday or after egg on Thursday or jobs on Friday. Let's do Wednesday. Members of the committee, any comments about that? Special meeting then for this report. Wednesday. What time will that be? That will be at 11 a.m., assuming they do not run long. What day was it? Wednesday the 20th. At 11? 11. So Wednesday. Will that be suitable, Mr. Ponstock? Um, just one second. I'm looking. When is uh, Finance Committee? Is there? Uh, finance is on the 27th. Okay. Until the next week. So any, any byproduct from that meeting could still make the agenda for finance if we needed it. Okay. I'm sorry, what, so what was what were you looking at? Which day? I had the 20th, April 20th. Okay, Wednesday the 20th after legislative? At, after legislative. Uh, I'll be in touch with Roger. Okay. We'll have to get together for the event. Is that okay with staff? Yes, that's fine. Staff there, okay with that? Staff there, okay yes. with that? Committee, okay with that? Yep. Okay. Oh, then Blair's doing the agenda? Yeah, Right, for admin. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I got kerfuffled here. I had my calendar for a second, they disappeared. Okay. I move replace reports on file. Um, motion by Martin, second by. Davist, that is to place the reports on file. Roll call, please. Berman? Berman, yes. Davist? Yes. Fork? Uh, Braz? Yes. Margin? Yes. Tyus? Tyus, yes. yes. No need we for adjourn. executive session. I move we adjourn. Martin, move to adjourn.